Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a region in turmoil. As a civil war pits brother against brother, and an army of dragons promises to conquer the world, it's clear the land we visit in The Elder Scrolls V is facing its fair share of challenges. But while this chaos may strike fear into the hearts of most, some especially shady characters see it as an opportunity. With the armies distracted, bandits have little opposition. With hold guards too concerned with manning the walls, thieves have almost nothing to fear. Alas, the conditions are now perfect for crime to thrive in this frozen region of Tamriel. And while certainly not always the most morally upstanding of citizens, many of the deviants you meet, and often battle against, do have quite intriguing tales and backstories worth sharing. A lot of Skyrim's villains are rather multidimensional, so today we'll be taking a look at a large subset of that, as we dive into five of the most interesting criminals in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, this one requires some context. Taryn Dreth is a Dunmer researcher, and author of the book The Ethereum Wars. He can only be physically met in a random encounter, but boy is he a big deal. His book suggests the reason behind the sudden collapse of the Dwarven city-states wasn't the result of some magical event or disease, but instead infighting over a resource known as Ethereum. Terran Dreth proposes that Ethereum, a weird blue rock you can find in a handful of Dwarven ruins that most modern blacksmiths are simply incapable of working with, actually contains immense power that the dwarves sought to harness. To do this, Dreth suggests that the Dwemer city-states allied together and built a great complex forge which successfully allowed for Ethereum to be melted down and shaped into mighty weapons. However, shortly after the forge's completion, the Dwarven alliance shattered as each tribe sought to claim the forge for themselves, and the ensuing war is ultimately what drove the dwarves into de facto extinction. Sounds like a neat theory. And later on during a specific quest, you can even find out that there's at least some truth to it. So what's the deal with Terran Dreth? What makes him a criminal? Well, the problem is that Terran's hypothesis and nearly all of his research aren't actually his. You see, during the quest, Lost to the Ages, which begins immediately after the player enters the Dwemer ruins of Arctothams, you'll meet a ghost named Katria. The spirit will tell you that she was once a successful researcher herself, and the true creator of the Ethereum Forge theory, and that Terran Dreth was actually just her apprentice. It turns out that one day, the Dark Elven student simply stole all of her papers and published them himself, getting all of the credit. Katria tried to expose him for the fraud he was, but no one believed her. She died in this very dungeon, desperately trying to find something that would prove to the world that she deserved the credit. Long story short, in the quest you eventually find the legendary forge for yourself. And while it's obviously too late for Katria to get the recognition she deserves, she can at the very least rest easily. After Lost of the Ages has been completed, a new random encounter will be unlocked, if you will where you can finally meet Terran for yourself. He'll simply be wandering Skyrim's roads with a small entourage. This will give you the opportunity to confront him for being the fraud that he is, which will immediately cause both him and his escorts to turn hostile. He can't allow the world to know the truth. I found Terran Dreth to be particularly interesting, as you can only meet him as a part of a random encounter, only after you've completed a side quest. And given random encounters are just that, random, it's easily possible that you can never even meet this guy. But if you do get that chance, make sure you take it to avenge Katria. Next on our list, we have Yatur. She's a Nordic prisoner currently locked up in Solitude's dungeon. So unlike most of the criminals on our list, she's been caught. Though after learning about her alleged crimes, depending on how you feel about Skyrim Civil War, you may develop some sympathies for our inmate friend. There were a couple of conversations she was supposed to have with Atar, the town's jailer and executioner, that would go like this. Hey jailer, what I don't understand is why you're siding with the Imperials. Shut up, scum. I mean the Red Guards fought off the Aldmeri and the Empire, and now Hammerfell is an independent state. That's all we Nords want for Skyrim. I said, shut up, scum. So it's okay if your people rebel against the Empire, but not mine. They aren't my people. I'm with the Empire because they pay me. And that means I'm out here, and you're in there. So shut up, scum! Now, the reason I say she was only supposed to have these conversations is that this dialogue will never naturally occur in-game. Not because it was cut, 
but Yatara and Atara never get close enough for this interaction to be triggered. Bethesda sort of accidentally made this discussion impossible to occur. But, it's clear Yatara is being locked up for her Stormcloak leanings. And she even has a copy of the book, The Bear of Markarth, which is literally about how great Ulfric is sitting on her desk. Now, while it seems obvious the woman is set for an execution, she may be in for a death much worse than the one Rogvir faced. That's because Solitude's court wizard, Sibyl Stentor, is secretly a vampire, who clearly seems to be feeding off of the town's prison population. Just take a listen to some of the dialogue you can overhear. Every now and then, Sibyl Stentor will come by looking for... volunteers. No, that honor is Sibyl Stentor's. A smart man steers clear of Stentor. And keeps himself out of the dungeon when she's having a bad day. Let's just say that the headsman's axe may not be the worst way for a solitude jail prisoner to die. Look at that. I've told you to watch your tongue, and mine is waggling. I've said enough. Sibyl is a really interesting character, deserving of her own spot in a video. But it looks like Yatar may learn that the hard way. Coming at number 3, Fiola is a Nord bandit leader held up with her tribe occupying the fortress of Mistwatch. Now, with such a description, it at first may be easy to confuse her with any other barbarian. Heck, the game itself doesn't even refer to her by her own name. Instead, she's assigned the generic title, Bandit Leader, in the subtitles. However, it's her backstory that makes her so unique. When you first enter Mistwatch, you'll meet a character named Krister cowering in a closet. He'll tell you that he's here to find his wife. One day, she left their farm to run errands and mysteriously disappeared. Krister fears the bandits here may have taken her, but admits he's not exactly prepared to fight them all off or sneak past them. So he asks you to explore the area and figure out what happened to his wife. Her name is Fiola. Such is the subject of the humorously named quest, Forgetting About Fiola, where, after clearing most of the dungeon, you'll eventually be surprised to find out that she's the leader of this bandit gang. Fiola will inform you that she left her husband, Krister, on her own accord. Not that she had anything against him, she just realized that she was unhappy with her life as a farm girl and wanted to go somewhere new. After leaving the farm one day, she fell into the good graces of these bandits and rose to become their leader. Pretty impressive. Fula will state that while she does empathize with her husband, she has no desire to go back, and will ask the Dragonborn to tell Krister that she's passed away, in order to spare his feelings. You can do as she asks and lie to the poor man, which will cause him to obviously be very sad, but at least he'll feel like there's some closure. Or if you want to be really heartless, you can just murder Fiola to death, and then proceed to tell Krister what you did, which will turn him hostile. Though that's honestly a pretty evil response. No matter what you decide to do, despite the name of the quest, I don't think any of us can ever forget about Fiola. For fourth spot, meet Brandish. He's a Breton mage held up in Fort Newgrad, behind a master locked door. Now, the thing about Fort Newgrad is that it will only be occupied by bandits if the player hasn't joined up with either faction in the Civil War. Once you've started the Civil War questline, the bandits, including Brandish, will immediately be replaced with Imperial soldiers. Or Stormcloak ones, should you capture Falkreath for the rebels. So, if you want to throw hands, or fire magic, with this character, make sure you get here early in game. Now, Brandish isn't the leader of the bandit gang he's a part of either. He's simply their most powerful mage. If you defeat the actual bandit leader in combat, you can find a journal in their inventory, which reveals that shortly after Helgen was attacked, these marauders overran the Imperial garrison at Fort Nukrad and took it over, so they moved in fairly recently. In their diary, the leader states that they sent Brandish to gather ingredients and see what potions and magic he could work up in the kitchen. The bandit leader's body will also contain a key to that kitchen. You can see where I'm going with this one. So whenever you're ready, you can open it up and face off against this magically gifted Breton for yourself. It's sort of a mini boss fight in a way. That said, his magical attacks aren't that strong, he just has a lot of health. Maybe he should have chosen to brandish a weapon? <laughs> I only included this entry for that pun. And finally, last on our list, Havior Ironhand is the Nordic chief of a bandit group occupying White River Watch. Much like Fiola, this man is much more interesting than most of the bandit leaders we meet. When you first approach White River Watch, you'll find that its exterior is guarded by two bandits. Once you've taken care of them, you may notice that one is carrying a letter, which reads the following. Quote, Rodolph, 
Your little stunts try my patience. I know my uncle has his issues, but he is our watchman and you will respect him. No more sneaking in and out, no more games with his ledger or nails on his chair. One more joke, and you'll see how funny a day in the cage can be. Signed, Havyar. It appears some of the bandits are playing pranks on each other. But not until you actually enter the cave will you fully understand what's going on. Upon your entrance, the Dragonborn will be greeted by an elderly character named Ulfur the Blind, who will mistake the player for another bandit and let you pass through. What? Who's there? Rodolph? That you? Boss was looking for you, said he'd be up at the summit. Better not keep him waiting. That's not all. On the table this visually impaired watchman is sitting at, will be a book titled, Ulfur's Book. Which, when opened, you'll notice is completely empty. It has no words at all. Now, once you finally make your way to the end of the cave, you'll get to meet Havyar for yourself. And unlike Fiola, he'll immediately turn hostile once he detects the Dovahkin. He isn't very interested in talking. But he does carry a journal in his inventory, which documents some of the group's struggles with local law enforcement. Also according to the text, Javier's blind uncle has been their watchman for quite a while. And he even revealed plans of a potential mutiny to Javier once, saving the group. So while his eyes may be bad, his ears obviously aren't. But I found Javier's multidimensionality to be so interesting. While he leads a brutal tribe of bandits that harasses innocence and has really no principles at all, at least at first, Javier clearly expresses quite a lot of compassion to his uncle, keeping him around and going so far as to stand up for him in the group, even when Ulfur may not be in the best state. So, while we may not be on Javier's best side, at least he takes care of those who are. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Top 5 Shockingly Interesting Criminals You May Have Missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Which of the mischievous individuals on this list did you find to be the coolest or most fascinating? And what shady NPCs do you know of that I didn't cover in this video? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.